the stick. What does it represent? Hope for a critical hit? Pride as a far-fetched. The exclusivity of being able to use an item called the stick, well, the last one mostly. In competitive Pokemon, there's a wide variety of items you can choose to equip onto your Pokemon. The item they'll be given is highly dependent on the role within the team that you build, but occasionally Game Freak does make the task of choosing an item much easier on us. Introducing the signature item. Now, this isn't its official name, but it's what I'm going to be calling it. These items were made with a specific Pokemon in mind. These items will only affect the Pokemon that they were made for, at least most of the time. Today, let's discuss the many signature items found in competitive Pokemon. Pokemon and whether or not they're actually good. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Actually, you should probably just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of cool competitive discussion videos just like this one that you can binge right after. Also, I've been getting like 100,000 views on each of my videos, but only have 79,000 subs. Can you go fix that? All right, cool, thanks. Okay, let's get into it. Oh, also, we're not including the Gen 6 Mega Stones or Red Orbs or anything just because I, I didn't feel like it. Yeah, we gotta start with the heavy hitters right away. We're not playing around here. The stick is serious business that can only be wielded by the Farfetch'd line. Despite Farfetch not having the highest stats in the game, it's got a killer design and this incredible item. The stick raises the chances of Farfetch landing a critical hit by two stages, meaning that every attack has a 50% chance to critical hit. If you pair this with a high crit rate move like Slash or Leaf Blade, that means you've got 100% critical hit rate. And Farfetch'd really needs this to get anything done. It's like kind of a mini Urshifu only if Urshifu wasn't a fighting type and had bad stats. But in Generation 8, we got access to a version of Farfetch'd that fixes, well, half of those problems. Yeah, he's a fighting type now, we'll get back to you on that stats thing. Anyways, while the Farfetch'd line aren't the strongest of Pokemon, they do have the most iconic signature item in the games, and you kinda gotta respect that. Well, maybe there's a more iconic item. The Thick Club is an item only wieldable by the Cubone line. This item does a very simple thing. It doubles the holder's attack stat. Yeah, they made huge power on items, so like, why can't we make soundproof an item, huh? It's just headphones. Just make headphones. Anyways, the Thick Club is basically the only reason Marowak's even remotely viable in modern generations. And when I say Marowak, I mean only Alolan Marowak, because no one's touching the Cantonia Marowak when we have ground types like Landorus or Great Tusk. Yeah, they don't hit as hard as Marowak, but at least they get to click an attack before they faint. Alolan Marowak, though, is pretty good. Being a non-ground type with access to Lightning Rod is a pretty great utility on its own, but this item shoring up its attack set to the point where it's the most threatening Pokemon in the field is pretty awesome. I mean, nothing really wants to switch in on a Flare Blitz coming off a 290 attack stat at level 50. For those of you who haven't noticed yet, I play VGC, so the level 50 is kind of relevant here. Singles is really cool though. I like Smogon. Very cool format. Thank you. There's not much to say here. It just hits really hard now with the Thick Club, and it's a very good item. I bet a lot of you forgot that these two items exist, and that's because they're basically useless. The Quick Powder is Ditto's exclusive item, which grants it double speed up until it transforms. No one uses it because the Choice Scarf accomplishes the exact same thing in most cases, only a 50% boost, but at the very least the effect persists after Ditto transforms, allowing it to reverse sweep setup teams and singles and doubles alike. The Metal Powder is the exact same thing, but it doubles Ditto's defense stat. Cool, I guess. Big Pikachu conspired with the Pokemon Company to make this item. The Light Ball is literally just an item that exists to give the not fully evolved mascot of the franchise some viability. And you know what? It kind of does work. Don't get me wrong, Pikachu isn't good, but there are many instances of someone rolling up to a VGC tournament with Light Ball Pikachu in hand and leaving with some points. I mean, this is just an item that doubles Pikachu's offensive stats. It's just Pikachu's thick club, but better. Timid Pikachu with a Light Ball hits 204 special attack at level 50, meaning that it's thunder. Thunderbolt is stronger than Thunderous Therians. On top of that, Pikachu has coverage in Surf and Grass Knot, so there aren't a ton of switch-ins on this. And if I had a nickel for every Pokemon that had an item that doubles their attack stat and had access to Lightning Rod, I'd have two nickels. Something, something, it's weird that it happened twice. Speaking of weird... Clampearl. I'm not sure if this is anyone's favorite Pokemon, but it had to be someone's at Game Freak because it has two signature items. The Deep Sea Tooth and Deep Sea Scale are used to evolve Clampearl into Huntail or Gorbis respectively. For some reason, they're also programmed to double Clampearl's special attack stat and special defense stat respectively. While the Deep Sea Scale doesn't see much usage, there's a lot of people who like to joke around with the Deep Sea Tooth. After doubling its special attack stat, Clampearl can have up to 276 special attack, so it hits harder than Kyogre if you don't include the rain. This this thing hits harder than the titan of the ocean. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny, and once again, there's not much more to say about it since not many people use Clam Pearl in VGC. I'm just now realizing how many of these come from Gen 3. The Soul Dew is an item that would increase the special attack and special defense stat of both Latios and Latias 
by 50%. That's ridiculously broken. These Pokemon are fast and powerful dragon types, but giving them a drawback free assault vest and choice specs in one item is just crazy, dude. Because of this, the Soul Dew was banned from official competitions up until Generation 7. So from Generation 3 to Generation 7, this item was exclusive to casual playthroughs, which I can't really think of another item that broken that they would do that sort of thing. But yeah, the Soul Dew was nerfed in Generation 7 to be similar to the Gen 4 legendary items, granting Latios and Latias a 20% boost to their dragon and psychic moves. While we're on that topic, let's knock out all the Gen 4 legendary items. The creation trio of Giratina, Dialga, and Palkia on release were given the signature items known as the Grusius Orb, Adamant Orb, and Lustrous Orb, which grant the respective users a 20% boost to their dragon moves and the move of their secondary typing, being Ghost, Steel, and Water respectively. Up until Generation 9, the Grusius Orb will also transform Giratina into Giratina Origin form. Upon the release of Pokemon Legends Arceus, three new items were introduced, called the Grusius Core, Adamant Core, and Lustrous Core. They all did the same things as the orbs, but would transform Dialga and Palkia into their origin forms as well. Due to the addition of the Grisius core, the orb in Gen 9 was changed to not transform Giratina into its origin form, meaning that it would keep everything nice and uniform across the board. All these items are alright and competitive, but on occasion Palkia and Dialga will swap out their orbs for the likes of safety goggles or life orbs, or even weakness policies in Generation 8 VGC. Arceus has never been VGC legal, and its items technically affect every Pokemon, but we need to touch on them briefly anyways. The plates are items that have a corresponding variant for every type in the game, from Insect to Pixie. Those aren't types, those are just the names of them, it's Bug and Fairy, you get my point. These simply grant the holder a 20% boost in their respective types. Arceus, however, has the exclusive effect of the plates changing its typing entirely, and changing the type of its signature move judgment, but that has more to do with its ability multi-type. Beyond that, these aren't technically exclusive items, but I feel like we should still include them. Okay, again, Genesect isn't typically VGC legal except for one time in Series 13 VGC 2022, but let's still talk about its signature items. The Burn, Chill, Shock, and Douse Drives simply change the type of its signature move Technoblast to Fire, Ice, Electric, and Water respectively, and they do nothing else. Notably, Technoblast is a 120 base power move with 100% accuracy that is special, meaning that these moves with their respective drives are actually the most powerful and reliable variant of each of their types. Very cool, I'd rather click Chill Drive Technoblast than Blizzard pretty much any day of the week. I don't feel like missing. The Memories are the signature items of the Gen 7 legendary Pokemon Sylvalli. Sylvalli's ability RKS system allows for the Memories to determine its typing, similar to Arceus' multi-type. These Memories also change the typing of its signature move, Multi-Attack. Multi-Attack was base 90 power in Generation 7, which is okay, but it didn't make Sylvalli that useful in battles. As of Generation 8, Multi-Attack was buffed to be a whopping 120 base power with no drawbacks, making Multi-Attack the most reliable physical attack of each of its respective types, and notably, the only good Rock-type attack that can't miss. Those are rare. I mean, actually look it up. Check out how many rock type attacks can miss. I mean, I know Power Gem and Ancient Power can't miss, but they aren't the best moves. The physical moves, the rock slides, the stone edges, why do those all miss? I'm pretty sure the only rock move that can't miss that's a physical attack is like Accelerock. And what, one Pokemon gets that? I'm sorry, this is completely unrelated, but yeah, I'm glad that multi-attack rock is like a good move. The Rusted Sword and Shield are the signature items of Zacian and Zamazenta. The sword turns Zacian into the best Pokemon in the game with 170 base attack, 150 as of Gen 9, and 148 speed. The shield turns Zamazenta into a silly looking guy. Check out the Worst Legendaries video, I, I get more in depth as to just the low depths of Zamazenta's viability there. Anyways, these items were one of the few things that balanced out the Generation 8 Legendaries, and I'm using balanced very loosely. If the items didn't exist, both of the legends wouldn't be as strong as the typical box legend. Well, actually, Zacian was probably just as busted, but yeah, it removed its item slot, that's kinda cool, so this prevented the likes of Safety Goggles or Focus Sash Zacia from being possible. Actually, the more I talk, the worse it gets. Point is, these items were really strong, and they allowed you to use the crown form of each of the legendaries, which was the better form for both of them in most cases. The newest and arguably cutest of the legendary Pokemon is Ogre Pond, who has a set of three signature items. Only three of the four masks are items, don't ask me why, but Ogre Pond has the Cornerstone, Wellspring, and Hearthstone masks. These masks, when equipped, will grant Ogre Pond the Rock, Water, or Fire secondary typing, and change the typing of Ivy Cudgel to their typing. On top of that, Ogre Pond is granted a new ability. Without a mask, Ogre Pond's ability is Defiant. With the Cornerstone Mask, it gets Sturdy. With the Wellspring Mask, it gets Water Absorb. And the Hearth Flame Mask grants it Mold Breaker. That's a lot of mechanics for one set of items, right? Well, we're not done. When Ogre Pond terastalizes, it gains the typing of the masks and changes its ability to Embody Aspect, which will give it a stat boost depending on which one of the masks it wears, being 
speed for grass, defense for rock, special defense for water, and attack for fire. Oh, and one more mechanic. The masks also passively boost Ogre Pond's moves power by 20% across the board. Very balanced. But we can only wait and see just what mask ends up being the best and competitive. But with that, we've covered just about every signature item, but I'm sure I missed something, so be sure to let me know in the comment section down below if I did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Remember, I have a full playlist full of competitive topic videos for you to check out right after this one. And if you want to support my channel further, you can do so over on my Patreon page or by becoming a YouTube member. By doing this, you get access to some bonus videos each week and can see your name at the end of each video like everyone up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.